SasquatchLive.net. This numbered series of videos is about mostly Sasquatch as well as other cryptids. If you wish to have your story narrated in this series, send your story written as clearly as you can and I, with others, will read your story in a professional way. I am mostly interested in dramatic and even dangerous encounters. Just send your story to neil.bigfoot at gmail.com. That's neil.bigfoot at gmail.com. Only I will choose the stories to be presented, and periodically, we will present live interviews. Soon, we will have a network at sasquatchlive.net where these videos will be collected. We will update you on the network as we move forward. Sasquatch Bigfoot. Dogman. Giants and other such cryptids are real. Not because I say so, but because math, science, gathered in historical knowledge and common sense say they are real. If doubters and government officials deny this, their motives are clearly corrupt. And we have been made corrupt for unknown reasons, because these paid people know far more than you or I, and they are being paid money to prevent you and I from talking about all of this. While thousands of witnesses are clearly telling the truth as they know it, as fact, and no one is paying them one single penny. You see these creatures? These are cryptids, non-human or dissimilar from human co-inhabitors of our planet. Evolved or hybridized from who knows who or what. You know what they are? You think so? You're just lying. You have no idea. You have no idea what they are. You're no smarter than I am. And I am at a total freaking loss. And to our advantage, the more phone cameras that are out there, the less the naysayers have to say. Because we're seeing more and more of these things on camera. See that Sasquatch blink? Do you have any idea what it would cost to have an ape costume blink? Not just with its lids, but with the musculature around the lids. Costumes? On a human baby who wears fur head to toe and he's hanging away from his mom's body? You know a human who can do that? Do you know anyone with a budget that builds a two to three million dollar costume for a few seconds on the YouTube? I don't. Would you do that? Of course not. Can you, in costume, jump up a 45 degree angle hill? You can't do that, you just can't. Do you know someone whose hands hang down almost to his knees? I don't know that either. I've never met somebody like that. Here's a new pastime taken up by basketball players. Between games, 
They've taken up the pastime of wearing full body costumes covered in hair, not fur, to go traipsing around in the woods, shocking farmers and campers. Do you talk like this for fun? If you do, then record it. We stumble across them. Would you have the presence of mind to whip out your phone in the middle of freaking out and crapping in your pants and taking pictures of these things? Yeah? I, like you, well, most of you, have never seen such things as Bigfoot, dogmen, or cryptids. But I, like most of you, don't hunt with guns or bows and arrows or hike through the national parks and forests. What is this thing going through the forest? Can you identify it as your uncle? I don't think so. I've never seen anything like this in my life. But there it is. This is Sasquatch tearing big slabs of bark off a tree. Not with claws like a bear, but with fingers and hands like you and me. But you and I don't tear big slabs of bark off a tree to get at the grubs and larvae and other insects inside. This is a Sasquatch. And they're anywhere from the size of my foot. One was twice the size of my foot. And there is noise behind me of a whoo kind of sound that, yeah, that was loud. There is something behind me towards the other side of the cabin. Indeed. Like I, you live in apartments in the cities or houses in the suburbs. You are like me, for the most part. You have no skills to survive in the woods. You have no idea how vast the massive woodlands of the world really are. You are naive and easily fooled, sort of like me. Yet you are willing to be incredibly insulting to your fellow human beings. And you laugh at all that you don't know. You think people who live in the woods, the farms, and hunt are ignorant hillbillies and are superstitious and scare easily. No, not you. I'm sorry, yes, you are exactly like that. You, like me, are kind of jerks. Hell, and massively ignorant of the woods. Hell, you don't have to take these things seriously, do you? These people out there on the edge of the forest have to take it all very seriously. To them, it's life and death. To you, it's a joke. The truth is, these people are more knowledgeable than us, braver in the face of danger, and they know the woods, and far more than us, they know the difference between a bear and a Bigfoot, a flying saucer and swamp gas, or a weather balloon. We are the gullible, not them. These out west witnesses are policemen, rangers, teachers, and college professors, nurses, decades-long hunters who have real jobs during the week, just like you and me, nor do they live just in the West. They live anywhere the woods encroaches into our yards, from New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, all the way out to the West Coast to Washington State. And the reported sightings number in the tens and likely hundreds of thousands. fact is, most sightings are unreported. Would you report a seven or eight foot tall Bigfoot or a dog man that ran across the road in front of your car? Of course, if they were to snatch off your head when you pulled over, this would be a moot question. If you dinged one with your car and he ran off, 
Would you report it and suffer the embarrassment of your friend's ridicule? Don't kid a kidder, folks. That's a Sasquatch chasing a car. That thing's about 10 feet tall, or it's running on the narrowest road in America. How many abandoned cars are found by the roadside by police in America? Tens? Hundreds? Thousands? Nobody reports these graveyards of abandoned cars or the missing people. You don't think so? How long are people missed? They are minor news items. Then they're gone, just like you would be, or me. If I said only one of a hundred is even reported, that would be an understatement. So logically, if you extrapolate the known Bigfoot and Dogman sighting, there are many thousands of Bigfoot out there. Many tens of thousands. This is not a joke. We will see as we go on that to them, we are prey animals. Compute these conclusions with all the thousands of missing people reported and unreported in our forests and parks. Think about that when you ridicule a fellow human who has seen something you haven't seen. For example, this is a Sasquatch running up a hill, getting away from the cameraman, and the hill is at a 45 degree angle. First, you can't run up a 45 degree angle hill. Second, you could never run up any kind of a hill this fast, nor is your leg spread anywhere near this wide. So this is something that is impossible for a human being to do, even though you're looking at it and you're saying to yourself, oh yeah, a guy could do that. It just can't, just can't. David Polites has reported thousands of missing people, some under incredible conditions, who go missing that he writes about in his multiple books. No record is kept on these missing people. Do you understand what I said? No record is kept on these missing people. If you request such a record of missing persons, the officials in charge will tell you they will provide such a list for a fee of over a million dollars. Does that sound beyond stupid and preposterous to you? A million dollars for a printout of missing people? This is Bigfoot as filmed by Roger Patterson and Bob Gimlin in 1967. Yes, it's an actual film of a real Bigfoot, a female as it turns out. This is a cleaned up copy of that film. Before we examine this carefully, let's look at some other strange creatures. This is a giant. Not a person with gigantism who suffers through their lives from an abnormality of the pituitary gland, but a true giant hybrid. This is a hybrid human Sasquatch. How do we know? We know a Sasquatch's head is low into its shoulders anatomically, as his trapezius muscles attach higher on his neck from his shoulders than on we humans, so that a Sasquatch cannot turn his head without turning his upper body. Look at this giant's shoulders. Ever see a human with trapezius and head placement like this? I have not, nor have you. No, you have not, except on a gorilla or a Sasquatch. This is because a Bigfoot or Sasquatch has a four times bigger head than you or me. When the head on any animal is bigger, in today's gravity, the neck must be thicker and higher to the skull, as in an elephant, rhino, or hippo. If your head were four times bigger, your neck would easily break with extreme action, unless your neck muscles are thicker and attached up higher. 
<laughs> this, well, you can't tell what the hell this is. It's a hybrid Sasquatch human of some sort. In Tibet, a woman was kidnapped by a Yeti, raped and later escaped. This is her offspring. He has little or no hair, like most Asians. He can't abide clothes like a Yeti. His head is pointed like a Sasquatch and some Bigfoot types. His trapezius are placed high on his neck. This is a creature from Limpopo, South Africa who runs with dogs. What is it? He's affected like a Down syndrome person, but not really. Do you know what this is? I certainly don't. What was this creature thing discovered in a cave? This is a smoke discharge or something. Smoke discharge, really? This was Jacko, a young adolescent Bigfoot found and captured in British Columbia in 1884 and shown briefly as a freak. Yet Jacko could twist and snap two inch branches in half that no human could even break. Then someone broke it free and it was gone. Who or what broke it free? Let me ask that question differently. If Jacko was a young juvenile Sasquatch that was part of a six or seven member clan with adults 10 to 12 feet tall who hide in the woods, never seen by limited human beings, creatures who vocalize to others two or more miles away as clearly as you talk across the room, who broke it free? There is no special effect here. Look at this hybrid trapezius. Have you seen a human with trapezius like this? Doesn't exist. This is the anatomy of a hybrid Sasquatch. Well, this, a floating little girl, very likely a trick of some sort. Or then, what's this? Or this. I'm saying there are strange things on Earth, and now things have changed. Now that our phones are cameras, and high definition is getting better, we are seeing more every day, and now we have drones. Check this drone shot of a Sasquatch running for cover to the woods. No, don't think so. Maybe it's a 400 pound sprinter. Twenty to thirty years ago, a camera from a satellite could shoot a golf ball in the grass and you could see the dimples in the golf ball. What happened to this tech when it comes to Bigfoot? Or missing children? Or simply missing people? Or people found dead? People who would never, ever insist all their friends kill themselves? Suicide in streams and lakes? After they take their shoes and socks off? Really? Streams? Drowned? People who swam like fish, drowned in a lake or stream? Just how stupid are the police and the authorities? No, my friends, these people will simply lie or they will lose their well-paid job. Remember, the higher the rank of an officer, the higher the salary a person makes. Then, the more he has to lose if he does not support the lie. More. These creatures are reported all over the world, England, Germany, all over Europe, Afghanistan, and yes, Australia, and of course, Russia. As to Africa and South America, I have no idea, I just don't know. First, please understand, I have no pony in this race. I live in New York City, but the evidence is conclusive. You know, I constantly hear people say, why, if they're a Bigfoot, why don't people take pictures of them? Listen, people. If you saw an eight-foot hairy beast going through the woods, 
Would you stop and take a picture and wait for him to come upon you and pull your head off? What would you do? Look at these pictures that we have. These creatures are seven to eight to nine to 10 feet tall. They're monsters. You're not gonna stick around. I'm a film fan, an artist, and I know a whole lot about anatomy. Critics say this was a costume made by a Hollywood costume builder. Yes, that's the correct phrase, costume builder. This is a close-up of a Bigfoot that didn't realize it was being videoed. See that blink? Does he look familiar? Sort of like the Patterson, Gimlin, Patty Bigfoot, hmm? So, let's go back and check Patty. Our fellow experts say that this costume, circa 1967, is a movie gorilla from an Abbott and Costello film. This nonsense was the crappy state of art of gorilla costuming in 1967. Fact. Did the old King Kong really look like a giant gorilla? No. Look at this nonsense. This is a gorilla. This is King Kong. Ray Harryhausen was a great model maker for his time. Now this King Kong looks like amateur night at the Bijou. This is a real gorilla. This is that costume. That costume looks nothing like a gorilla, nor does this. This or this. These costumes are preposterous and laughable. This nonsense was only ended when real professionals like Rick Baker, who in the mid 1970s showed up and initiated modern reference costume building and makeup. Even so, the astounding Rick Baker in his great 1976 film King Kong was never able to get the longer arms done in time for the movie. Patty not only had longer arms, but she had real hands at their ends and she was seven feet tall. Real hands and seven feet tall. Her stride was five feet long. Your stride is three feet long if you're tall. Thing is, Patty also had breasts. Have you ever seen a gorilla costume with breasts? No, never. You never have. Who would ever take the time and energy to create a brand new technology to build pendulous female breasts filled with what and why? Why would anyone do such a thing? If you wanted to make a fake Sasquatch, why would anyone do a female, do a male? Like all gorillas in Hollywood, such a thing would be insane. Really folks, why would some insane costume builder double his problems and costs by building natural breasts in a costume? For a few frames of a cheap film for a guy with no money. That goes beyond insane. But let's go further. Patty has a butt with two butt cheeks and a crack in the middle. Not like a gorilla butt, but like a hybrid human butt. Who would ever think of such a thing? Looks nothing like a gorilla. Who was the genius? Who would do that? If this costume were presented in Hollywood in 1967, it would never get to the screen. Naked breasts and a bubble butt with a crack in it? You naysayer nuts have got to be kidding. Gorillas have gorilla butts and that's what Hollywood costume builders tried to fake poorly over the years. 
Patty has a human-like hairy butt with a crack, like you and me. No costume builder on earth would ever build such a thing or ever did. It's beyond possibility that in 1967, anyone could or did build such a thing. Anyone who says it's a costume is a fool and ignorant of facts, technology, and film history. One other thing, your human anatomy allows limited movement when you walk or run. A Sasquatch's anatomy is different. His or her foot breaks in the middle like this, at the mid-tarsal break, a bit more like a gorilla. This allows the Bigfoot's heel to raise before the toes. So the stride is smooth, not bouncy like ours. We have an arch, which causes our whole foot to rise at the same time, shoving our weight to our toes. Some people are flat-footed and the arch was flattened, but Bigfoot's feet go further. The foot's heel rotates upward at the mid-tarsal break. Here is a footprint of this mid-tarsal break. The Bigfoot's massive foot lands full on the ground, then the heel comes up first, followed by the front of the foot smoothly. And here's Patty bringing up that foot. This allows Patty and all Bigfoot to walk the way they do, smoothly and silently through the woods. So Sasquatch walks differently than human beings. Sasquatch walks like a hippo or like a fashion model on the runway. He places one foot in front of the other so that if another Sasquatch is behind him, that Sasquatch places its footprint in the same footprint that the previous Sasquatch, so you can't really tell how many Sasquatch there are. Humans walk a little bit more duck-like. You can see in this example, a human is on the left, Sasquatch is on the right, and there's one Sasquatch following the other Sasquatch. This is the most significant fact. Humans, people, are not sculptors who are skilled in general, yet thousands of plaster casts have been taken of Bigfoot footprints from all over the world and they are all the same and all made by an incredibly talented sculptor. Or, they are all casts from hundreds of Bigfoots around the world. A talented sculptor or Bigfoot feet? What do you think? These are plaster casts, all anatomically the same. In general, bigger, smaller, or crippled, these feet are anatomically all the same. Unless molds of brilliantly sculpted big feet of various sizes, broken and crippled, are being sent to kooks all over the world to shove deep into the dirt, carrying 800 to 1,000 pound loads to shove into the ground, all these perfect prints are impossible. Are the naysayers simply stupid or innocent dupes of a mindless conspiracy? They are simply paid naysayers that film crews and naive idiots interview as if they were true investigators and experts. What a bloody joke. And that, that's a Sasquatch, is in Japan. Yep, Sasquatch are everywhere in the world. This one's in Japan. That's a bad edit by somebody in Japan. This is the Sasquatch looking for food. He's looking for fish or some other fish in the water. All Sasquatch fish by hand. I've read a hundred witness reports of people watching Sasquatch as he rocks from side to side to improve his binocular vision as he looks at things. Let's check this out. There are real government investigators, but they have high-powered guns, sound projectors in massive armored vehicles, night vision and explosives, and they hunt and kill Sasquatch and Bigfoot for their weekly pay. They too witness on the internet, and you can read it and listen to it. This is clearly a real phenomenon. Next criticism. 
is why haven't we filmed them, shot them, shown their carcasses or bones? Okay, one at a time. We have shot them many times. We shoot them all the time and cart their bodies away. You can find dozens of testimonies on the internet by hunters and ex-military. They shoot them. They riddle their dying bodies with buckshot, high caliber automatic and semi-automatic gunfire. Bigfoot die hard, but they do die dead. But then, and this too is testified on the internet, males, females, adolescents, and babies. Officials of some known and or unknown agencies cart Sasquatch bodies away and they are never seen again. And then agents or paid thugs or superior officers warn, threaten witnesses they are not to speak of or write about these incidents or else. Who would ever threaten people to clam up? And why would they do so? That's nuts, right? You ever get threatened by a clandestine individual telling you to never speak of this or else? Ask people who lived in Roswell and saw a ship and alien bodies dead and alive. People told by pseudo-official semi-military serious agents not to talk and that dead bodies are found in the desert all the time. There was a large silver disc-shaped object uh, was embedded in the side of the ridge line and uh, there was debris and, and, and wreckage and stuff uh, strewn about the area, but mainly this thing was intact. I would estimate its size fit to be something like 35 feet in diameter. When we got up to it, there were uh, four bodies there, not human. Uh, there was two of them who were obviously dead. One of them was obviously very badly injured, and one of them apparently uh, suffered no ill effects or didn't appear to be injured. Really, the way I became involved in this was I received a telephone call from the mortuary officer out at the Army Airfield Base. And uh, he was inquiring about what would be the smallest possible casket that we could get that would be hermetically sealed. These creatures, all of them were all about four foot tall, four, four and a half feet tall. The lady lieutenant that I wanted to see was coming out of one room going across the hall to the other and she noticed it with me. She said, how did you get in here? What are you doing in here? And she said, you better get out in a hurry. She said, you're going to get in a lot of trouble. She said, would you please leave and get out of here in a hurry? And she went on into the other room. Then in about the time I turned around, there was another officer said, hey, wait a minute. And I said, uh, looks like you had a crash. Ambulance is out there. I see a lot of wrecking. I said, and he said, there wasn't any crash. There was another officer coming out. He said, this man says there was a crash out at the base. He said he wanted to know about, he was inquiring about our crash. And this was when I encountered, he was a red-headed officer and uh, very nasty, very uh, uh, rough. He said uh, he did not see any crash. There was not any cat crash. And he said, uh, you get the hell out of here and you didn't see anything and you don't talk to anybody. He said, you're going to get in a hell of a lot of trouble. And I said, look, I'm a civilian and there's a damn thing you can do to me about it. He said, no, but somebody might be picking your bones out of the sand. That's when he made the remark there. The sergeant that was standing beside him, and he said, yeah, but he would make better dog food for our dogs. And then there was two MPs that joined me right on, took me outside, and each holding me by my elbows, and they escorted me out to the, back to the ambulance and followed me all the way back to the funeral home. You don't think all this happens? I might not either. But there are hundreds of clear and intelligent interviews on the YouTube for hundreds of hours of listening from real people who have absolutely nothing to gain and everything to lose if they speak out. You haven't listened to them, have you? I have. You know who listens? People who don't believe in Bigfoot or other cryptids, but who suddenly are faced by one and is terrified, wets their pants, 
and are chased back to their cars. Then they become believers and they listen to all the other witnesses in shock. Their lives are changed for the worse and their nights are filled with nightmares. Many have lost their jobs, become alcoholics, and many will never enter into the woods again. Part of their lives were destroyed and yet government officials cart these carcasses of Sasquatch bodies away, never to be seen again by us humans out there in the real world. Oh my word. Bigfoot's walking down right now. Uh huh. See, he's standing taller. Uh oh, I'll get back we, to camp. We see something moving on the hill above. Run! Where? Where is it? It's like right on the other side of it. Yeah. No, it's kind of looking at us. I don't see it. Moving now. It's to the right of him. It's walking that way. See that king chapel? Yeah. He's that kind of little king thing. That little thing. On the right side of the tree. Its arms are way too big. Look at how long the hands hang down to the... I think you can oh, see from there down to his knees at least, aren't they? Look at look what I'm looking at. His arms yeah, obviously see, hang... Hold on. I need to... His arms obviously hang below his He's knees. screaming at us something. Get out of my oh, camp. Look, Get out of my down. camp. He's probably saying, hey, there's 15 Bigfoots now. <laughs> He's right in between the two trees. Hundreds are taken to the Smithsonian, and they are never seen again. Why? Oh, am I picking on the Smithsonian? What better place to disappear an eight-foot Sasquatch skeleton? Read the newspaper reports. It ain't me saying all this. I just read it. Have you ever seen a bear carcass or a wolf? No, you have not. You just don't find them in the woods. The ones you see are taken away by hunters and processed and cleaned for study or trophy. Or else, nothing. <laughs> you are living a fantasy if you think bear or wolf carcasses are found in the forest. They're not. The forests do away with them very quickly. The forests are owned by the cryptids. They abide us as tasty vermin. <laughs> I should be too close to it. There it is, it's right behind that tree. More importantly, Sasquatch travel and live in family groups, sort of like lions. They bury their dead or in some way hide them away. Really? Smart enough to bury their deads? What a shock. They build homes, signs in the forest, and they talk to each other. <laughs> Oh, 
These same groups congregate in meeting areas that have been found in abundance on the edge of forests. Check it out. Inside they lay thick moss or dry pine needles. There are lean-tos for sleeping. A meeting area or community area consisting of a ring of tree trunks held in place by driving posts on either side of the logs holds them in place. Think of it as a playground for kids surrounded by benches for adults to sit and watch and chat like we have in our parks. Each camp has a dominant teepee. They don't live in these teepees. These are symbols of massive community. Each tree represents another family that live in the general area. Want to know how many Bigfoot families live in this area? Count the poles. Are these trees cut by saws or axes? It have to be, right? But they're not. No, these trees are broken by grasping and twisting them to bend or break asunder. Trees that are seven to eight inches in diameter broken by twisting by 11 to 12 foot tall Sasquatch. Are there any other animals on earth that can do or would do such a thing? Maybe an elephant. You nor any of your friends could twist or break a two inch branch. 12 foot tall Sasquatches can do such a thing to trees eight inches thick. And more, they can uproot trees and carry them away. They and only they could build these camps and never use an ax or a blade of any sort. Certainly no human could do such a thing. Do they live in these camps? No, they live underground in thousands of caves in the world. They sojourn and camp in these camps that are found everywhere. Only in the traveler camps do we find the teepees. Is this a common practice among primates? Look and listen to these tribal hunters in Borneo. This Sasquatch has come down a hill annoyed at something. He rises and throws a rock sidearm. That's how they all throw and they do it all the time. Little or big rocks, limbs, pine cones, or small boulders. You don't throw sidearm, nor do I, but Sasquatch always does. This Sasquatch was spotted and might have attacked the filmer, but the need, as you can see, to protect the young was more important. The person caught this Sasquatch on tape and instantly kept after it to vid it even more. He must be crazy.
This Sasquatch was ripping bark off a tree for the grubs or animals beneath. This Sasquatch was minding its own business when a family with the dog came upon it and it skedaddled. This woman found undeveloped film in her dad's old camera, destroyed the camera getting it out and found a Bigfoot. This shot from very far away catches a Bigfoot climbing on a rock to shake bird's eggs out of a tree. Notice the bird is diving on the Sasquatch to protect the eggs. Too bad. This Sasquatch in Russia was spotted watching bathers under a small fall. Вот смотрите за камнем. Смотрите за камнем. Вон за камнем. A Sasquatch beating a hasty retreat. This duo of Sasquatch were seen spying on the filmer. They must have thought there was more woods behind them because you can see them tremendously clearly. As for the still photos, check these out.
SasquatchLive.net. This numbered series of videos is about mostly Sasquatch as well as other cryptids. If you wish to have your story narrated in this series, send your story written as clearly as you can and I, with others, will read your story in a professional way. I am mostly interested in dramatic and even dangerous encounters. Just send your story to neil.bigfoot at gmail.com. That's neil.bigfoot at gmail.com. Only I will choose the stories to be presented, and periodically we will present live interviews. Soon, we will have a network at sasquatchlive.net where these videos will be collected. We will update you on the network as we move forward.